This tiny light makes lighting scenes so much faster. Uh, why, you might ask? Well, I could rattle off specs and try to sell you on it for 12 minutes, or I could sit you down with a warm mug of tea, play a soft record, dim the lights, and tell you a story. This story began when I received a package from Jiyun. The contents of the package? A bag? A vintage camera? No. A light? What else? Power adapter and cable, a mini reflector, really mini, a Bowens mount adapter, the most adorable mini softbox ever made, a battery grip, a strap, and last but not least, a call to adventure. The light looked very promising, but how did it perform? And more importantly, could a small light like this speed up my solo shooting workflow? It needed to be tested, tested in the field. So I devised a set of trials. And then I cleaned up all my kids' toys so you would think I keep an immaculate home at all times. Trial number one, interior day, background light. On a cloudy day, the X100 performed well as a background light. As it shined through the windows at 100%, 5600 Kelvin, it managed to add some interesting dimension to the background without having to lug out a big heavy beast like a 650D. Trial number two, exterior day. On a cloudy day at 100%, the Molus proved itself to be a nice little kicker light. The difference is subtle, but it definitely can add some dimension to a shot. And all the more so, I'd say, if you're shooting somewhere dark, like the woods. Trial number three, interior day, hard source key. I postured the light in such a way that it would be hard on the body and bounce off a footrest to key the face. This is where the light really shined, pun fully intended. It was plenty bright and had a nice natural ray of sunshine look to it. For that natural look. Trial number four, interior, adapted softbox, key. Next, I adapted a Bowens mount softbox. The light was more than adequate levels for this cloudy day, even at 15%. I then showed you 100% for comparison. Trial number five, interior day, natural light plus moleless mini softbox. Now this is where speed comes into play. I wanted to see if I could get a movie quality shot in under 5 minutes using only natural light, the Molus, and its tiny softbox, and a little cheating from a hazer. And yes, believe it or not, the shot took 5 minutes to light. The trick here was again, hard on the body while bouncing off a footrest and the floor to give it the look of a reflected natural daylight. Trial 6, exterior, night, various uses. I first set up a contemplative patio scene using only the backyard practical lamp as a motivation and the molus with its mini softbox. I was really happy with the results despite the simplicity of the setup. Sometimes less is more. Trial number seven, interior, night, various. I set up the Molis at 6500 Kelvin for a cool moonlight effect and blasted it through the windows and blinds at 100% with no diffusion. I supplemented the fill by bouncing a 60 watt off the wall behind the camera. Next I set up a simple warm living room key light scenario, using only dimmed background practical lamps for motivation and the Molus bounced off the wall at 60% at 2900 Kelvin. Once again proving that sometimes it's best not to overcomplicate. Placement is everything. Battery length. This one's simple. At 100% the battery lasted 30 minutes. But for nighttime Hollywooding of the light, one wouldn't be at 100% anyways. There were also options for USB-C external plugging. Next we had to enter into the most difficult part of any story. The belly of the beast when I had to answer the dreaded question of what are the not so great things about this light. But first I paused to thank Jiyun for sending me this light. This video is not sponsored and I always maintain honesty with my viewers. So here are my thoughts. The lack of built-in Bowens mount could be a deterrent for some. This didn't bother me though because it makes this a light that literally fits in your pocket or travel bag, making this a great option for on the road interviews. The Bowens mount felt pretty durable and is a heavy plastic, but I wished it was metal. The heat and fire warning stickers all over it were a bit alarming, but it does have a built-in noiseless fan, and even though it got quite hot, it was still something I could handle without gloves. The color accuracy. I did not have the means to test this myself, but you should be warned that the colors are reportedly inaccurate at output percentages less than 10%. For me, the biggest downside was the price. 
The pro kit that I have comes in at $400, which to me feels a little expensive. However, by itself, the light is $250 US dollars, and there are a number of combo options. Now it's tiny, elegantly designed, and maneuverable, but the $400 price, though not unreasonable, is a tough one to justify when it comes to users prioritizing gear purchases. As I emerged from the belly of the beast, I soaked in the goodness of what is great about this light. When I was traveling a lot for interviews, this light would have been at the top of my list for its size, portability, and brightness. Slip this in a pelican, backpack, or suitcase with an umbrella, and you've got a bright, portable key light on the go. And when not competing with windows, this makes for a perfectly usable key light for most scenarios. Which leads me into the thesis of this story. This light allowed me to light movie style scenes at a much greater speed because it's so light and portable and for its size and weight at 3.3 pounds, it is very bright and more than adequate for just about any of my usual setups. This is a light that encourages thinking outside the box. It's the type of light you could hang from a tree, control remotely and light up a night exterior. The verdict. As I reached the conclusion of this story, I then gave you my final thoughts on the light. The Molus X100 was beautiful in its design, fairly sturdy in its construction, lightweight, slim, highly portable, highly mobile for run and gun travel shoots, but not without a few drawbacks. Overall, this is a very unique and fun light, and one that I know will certainly fit my workflow moving forward. If you need portability and speed, then this might be the light for you. However, if the price is a deterrent, then I can understand your apprehension. It's not that the light isn't worth $250 to $400, but it's a tough cost to prioritize in the sea of gear. I thank you for watching and encourage you to watch the next one when the end screens pop up.